What's up, everybody? Hope you guys are doing fantastic on... It's not really Red Friday, but this is the Friday, Red Friday Q&A hangout. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I did this last season, um, but it's because me and Danny, my wife, we're going on a staycation today, tomorrow. We'll be back Sunday. What I want to do is kind of go over a little bit of Chiefs news from today. From Andy Reid's presser, there's a few things that's definitely worth worth talking about. And then we're going to obviously do a Q&A and hang out. But um, for those of you coming to get info on the title, Andy Reid seems fed up with Chris Jones. Uh, Buchel chose the Buffalo Bills. Um, we're going to talk about all that, and then we'll get into a Q&A. But first... All right, so since week one... To start the season against the Lions is on a Thursday. Andy Reid said today, so Friday, September 1st, uh, is basically they're treating it like a Monday, a typical Monday during the NFL season. So the coaches are here. They're prepping their game planning for the Lions. Um, there's a lot going on, and they're trying to limit distractions and just focus up. It's been a, you know, a long offseason, but a short one for the Chiefs who just won a Super Bowl. Um, they did all their rounds in the media, but now it's back to business. Football is here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. He did say practice um, Saturday, Sunday for the team is going to be like a Wednesday, Thursday. No, let me see. Tomorrow's practice is like uh, he's, they're going to be there working out, lifting some weights and stuff. And then Sunday, Monday is going to be like a typical Wednesday, Thursday practice for the team. That's uh, based on them having a Sunday game. So he's just kind of saying, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what the week looks like. So the Chiefs are practicing tomorrow, Sunday, uh, Monday, and maybe even Tuesday, I would imagine, maybe the day before is off. But anyway, everything shifts because it's a Thursday game. Just found uh, you guys should know that if you didn't already. Um, what else we got here? Everybody practiced on Thursday. So there was a practice Thursday, yesterday, which means... There's no real major injuries to report, per the words of Andy Reid. Now, does that mean every single player, just because he said everybody on the active 53-man roster practice, does that mean everybody is going to be suiting up and ready to go uh, Thursday against the Lions? I don't think so. We'll have to see. Um, the biggest guys I want to watch is Kadarius Tony, Kadarius Legarius, it rhymes. So Kadarius Tony, Legarius Sneed. I want to keep an eye on, you know, Leo Chanel with that hit pointer. Turk Wharton, is, is he going to be back out there? How many snaps is Isaiah Pacheco going to get since he just got cleared for contact? This is stuff worth looking at. And now that I think week one is here, um, the, the start of the season is here, obviously, we should actually get injury report updates. So I'm excited to see those and see who is a full participant, limited. Um, I think everybody would be either full or limited because Andy Reid said everybody practiced. There's no real updated injury report. Now, I am not that hopeful at this point in time that Kadarius Tony plays on Thursday. If he does, I think it's going to be a very limited role. I would actually be pretty surprised. Um, part of me thinks they're just going to say everybody's a go. Uh, so the Lions don't know how to prepare exactly for the team, but we'll see. Brooks, thanks for the membership, bro. Let's go, man. Brooks, he... Uh, homie from back in the day playing Call of Duty. Let's go, man. Um, what else here? He said there's a chance Thursday, talking about week one against the Lions, all seven wide receivers could be active. Um, they're working through it right now, but he did say there's a chance they could dress every single one of them out. thought that was kind of cool. And then about Chris Jones. Let's get there. Andy Reid has no idea if Chris Jones will show up this week. He said there's no indication either way. They did talk recently. Not Andy, but the Chiefs, so probably Brett Veach and company and Chris Jones and his representation. Um, but Andy said he's not going to get involved in the contract situation or get involved in talking with Chris. He's letting Brett Veach and company handle it all. He trusts them. That's how it's going to go down. Um, his focus is on who's here, the here and now. You treat it like somebody's injured, the next man up, and they're going to run it. Now, nobody's going to be able to replace Chris Jones, okay? We know that, but he's going to... He's going to build build the roster, the best guys out there, put them out, and utilize their strengths and their skill set. He did say this, though, about Chris Jones. I found it interesting. He said, quote, everybody makes their own decisions. Uh, actually, can I share my screen for that? Yeah, let me share my screen so you guys can see this. He said, everybody makes their own decisions. Certain guys do it one way. Certain guys do it another. Chris chose to go this route. Some other guys have chosen to get their deals done and to come in and play. Um, I think he's beyond tired of the situation. You know, he 
he's just done. He's fed up with it, probably gets annoyed by every single question. I'm sure he just wants Chris Jones in the building. Now, at the same time, I understand Chris Jones wants paid. Um, I get it. Um, Stone Cold Stunner, I'll show you the shirt in a minute. It's pretty dope. Uh, I wore it, hoping Chris Jones maybe reports here soon. Um, but yeah, I think Andy's fed up a little bit with the situation. But again, he still spoke highly of Chris, saying that even though they have to keep rolling, there's no like straight up player that's just going to replace Chris Jones. <laughs> okay, so that's not going to happen. You know, no Chris Jones replacement, but they're going to utilize the, the strength of uh, the players that they got there. Um, the other thing I want to talk about real quick, I want to talk about Shane Buchel after I talk about uh, a Chris Jones contract update of sorts because Shane Buchel was offered to come back to Kansas City and declined. But first, um, there was a little report today by Tony Pauline. He's an NFL insider. Um 43,000 on um, Twitter. But he said this about the Chris Jones situation. He got a little bit of an update. Um, but th this isn't a surprise, yet here we are. He said, so where do the Chris Jones contract negotiations presently stand? People I've spoken with believe the deal will get done soon, and the two sides are not far apart. That being the case, I'm also told the Kansas City Chiefs are standing firm in their most recent offer and may not be willing to budge anymore. So will Chris Jones come soon? Pause. Will he return soon to the team? Um, that remains to be seen. Seems like they're closer on a, a deal. Uh, I would assume some of the things being worked through has to do with guarantees, overall length of contract, and not just the average per year. Um, but this most whatever the most recent offer is that the Chiefs made, seems like it's going to be their last as a, hey man, this is the best we can do. You know, I bet you they try to meet him somewhere a little bit more than their initial offer that they they had when the talks ramped up during training camp. And then they kind of went to a standstill about halfway through camp. So there's that. Um, we will see. I, I have no idea just what Andy Reid said. No idea if they're going to report. Kelsey, Travis Kelsey, that's been making its rounds. He was like, Chris Jones, please come back, man. We need you. Travis Kelsey himself said, I don't really get it. Um, but he's pulling for Chris Jones and hoping to see him back here soon. I, I, I do think the players at this point, talking about, players on the roster, they got to be looking around a little curious. I mean, what Travis Kelsey said on his podcast, New Heights podcast with Jason, he was like, I I'm a bit confused by it all, you know, and I just hope he comes back because I want to chase another ring with him. So I think that's what most players are thinking right about now. <laughs> I think uh, they are wondering what the heck is going on. Then the last thing I want to talk about before answering some questions is, um, from you guys is Shane Buchel. I want to talk about that. It was it was a little bit interesting. Andy Reid said in his presser that Shane Buchel chose to move on after getting waived. Quote, he made the decision to go to Buffalo and it's a new start for him. And I'm sure that's what he was thinking about. So, super interesting. I, I did wonder, once Shane Buchel got waived, he didn't earn the QB2 spot. If the Chiefs did indeed offer to sign him to the practice squad because Chris Oladokun signed, but no Shane Buchel. You see him two days or a day and a half later with the Bills. He signed to the Bills practice squad. And so my question was, my question was at the time, did the Chiefs offer Shane Buchel to sign with the practice squad? And did Shane Buchel simply turn it down and go look elsewhere for a fresh start? Well, that looks like it is exactly, exactly what happened. He got waived, but the Chiefs said, we'd love to have you back on the practice squad. And Shane Buchel, you know, who has been with Mahomes at his right hip for two years, going into his third season, you know, was looking good and promising at possibly earning the QB2 spot in Kansas City. He was on the active roster all last season, although he was a healthy scratch. But I just think he gets to the point where he's like, well, I'm not going to get the QB2 spot. So I'm just going to go elsewhere and try my best to set myself up in a position where I can get the QB2 spot. And will he get that with Buffalo? Um, I don't know. The Bills are a good team. Josh Allen is a great quarterback to learn from, to glean from. So I, I all that being said, I, I wish him the best in his next chapter. Would have loved to see him on the practice squad. I think he would have been a valuable QB three, even in Kansas City. You know, had Mahomes got hurt, which I don't want to happen. You know what I mean? But then Gabbert's there. You know, I think they would have been more confident having Shane as a backup to Blaine rather than Chris O. But who knows? You know, the Chiefs could still bring somebody else in. Um, but Shane Buchel did choose 
his future, and that was to move on from the Kansas City Chiefs and start fresh with the Buffalo Bills. So there you go. That's kind of today's update. Um, I'm doing this again because me and my wife are going out of town. We're going on a staycation, rather, for a couple of days right before the season starts. Um, it's going to get crazy again, obviously. So we're going away, no kids, and just relaxing, chilling, uh, going to hang out. And there's a rooftop pool. I'm going to drink whatever boulevard I can find all along the way. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. I probably won't do a video tomorrow. The only time, the only way I'm doing a video, and my wife knows this, is if Chris Jones gets a deal done or reports. I've got the thumbnail ready. I've got everything ready. If I have to record a quick video like this, like a five minute video off the cuff and upload it, uh, my wife knows that. So when we booked this vacation, I literally said, yeah, there's not going to be any Chiefs news we even need to talk about this weekend. Well, I obviously didn't know Chris Jones still wouldn't be here. So if Chris Jones doesn't show up or get a deal done, no video tomorrow, I will probably do a video like this on Sunday when I get back because there will be Saturday practice and a Sunday practice. So there's going to be some stuff worth talking about. So I will probably go live Sunday night just like this. I'll do an update and then Monday I'm back to work and we will start pumping out the dailies um, and all that stuff and getting ready and gearing up for the start of the 2023 NFL season, ladies and gentlemen. So if anybody comes in here saying, what is going on? What's the scoop with Andy Reid and Buchel and Chris Jones and all that? Just point them back to the beginning of the stream and say, Cole rambled on for about 15 minutes about it at the beginning of the stream. With all that being said, I hope you guys are doing well. We have 730 people in here on a Friday. Um, it's great to see y'all, man. Exotics in here, Chiefs fan, Boots, M4, Cyber. Sam said, I think all of Chiefs Kingdom is tired of the situation. I agree. The Bills don't want Buchel for his skills. They just want to get info. Yeah, um, there's definitely some of that there. That's When I saw him sign there, I was like, yeah. Uh, they definitely want... To glean from him you know i think there is certain lines you don't cross when you're sharing info about your previous team but i don't who knows behind closed doors what's really shared so it's pretty unfortunate i know patrick mahomes and shane buchel were like very close friends their entire families uh spouses all that were really close so that's got to be hard but it's part of the business and it is what it is stefan or stefan steven one of those three pronunciations says Chris needs to be traded ASAP. He's being petty to a team who has created a very good resume for him. Um, I don't know if he's going to be traded at this point in time, but you can't rule it out. How does the Kansas City Chiefs protect their overall quarterback strategy since Buchel now? They have an insider possibly on their team. That's a great question, man. Um, you know, the verbiage and lingo does change up uh, from season to season a little bit, and I think they'll take that into consideration when they play the Bills. I'm sure they will game plan for that, saying, hey, Buchel might have given them some info on, you know, Mahomes' tells on the offense, what he's, uh, things that he's saying and stuff like that. So I, I'm just sure they'll simply uh, switch up the vocab because that's that's the biggest thing is them knowing stuff at the line and being able to kind of uh, decipher that. But I think the Chiefs play the Bills at Arrowhead. So, yeah, that actually works against Mahomes a little bit in his favor in that regard because the crowd, the home crowd will be quiet for the offense, which means the defense has a little bit better of a chance to hear things at the line and, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it is what it is about Buchel and Buffalo now. kind of sucks, but, hey, it's part of the business, man. Jeff with a 20, come visit West Michigan sometime. Hey, that'd be fun. We need to... Uh, we need to go somewhere in the off season. Once my health is better, I'd love to. I'd love to travel somewhere out a little bit farther. Shane picked the Bills practice squad over our practice squad. Yep, simple as that. Um, Brooks said, "Congrats on all the success." Thanks so much, man. I appreciate you a ton, dude. I'll never forget when you sniped me out of that car in blackout. You changed my life, man. I was like, "How did he do that?" No. Um, yeah, he chose the Bills practice squad over the Chiefs practice squad. Somebody said, "Well, he's probably just wanting to go to a team where he has a better chance at being QB 2 I'm like. Uh, I don't know that he how much of a chance he has at being QB2 with the Bills. I, I, so I just think he was ready to move on and get a fresh start. And that's what Andy Reid alluded to in his presser. He just said, hey, uh, it's a fresh start for Shane, I, basically, and I think that's what he wanted. I mean, I literally have the direct quote of what he said. He said, 
Uh, what did he say? He made the decision to go to Buffalo, and it's a new start for him, and I'm sure that's what he was thinking about. That's per the words of Andy Reid today in his presser. Love the shirt. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah, I got sent this in the mail. I'm actually trying to remember who sent it. Do you guys remember? We opened it on a live stream. It was, uh... What the freak is it? Do you guys remember? I should have remembered the company before I wore the shirt name. Or the shirt. Uh... I wore it in a video sometime recently. Let me... Let me see if I can find it. Because I put the I put their website in there. I kind of want to see. It's on a live stream. Maybe it was before this. Chiefs cut downs. I'll see if I can find it. Who's Bills QB2? Another Allen? <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. They're they're both Allens. Kyle Allen? Yeah, I think it's Kyle Allen. He's he's uh he's the bat he's the Bills backup. Jeez Louise, 17 notifications on Twitter. Has Chris Jones returned? What am I missing? Anything? No? Okay. Well darn it. Adam McKeith is Bills QB2? Okay. Okay, fair enough. Two and a half sacks for Jones week one, said Shane. So you think he reports, returns, and gets two and a half sacks? Let's go. Joyce said a guy came into the elevator with one of your merch shirts on. It was so cool. Oh, for real? At, at Arrowhead? That's freaking awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Chris Jones for Aaron Donald and draft pick? I mean, you don't want to pick up Aaron Donald's contract. It's worse than Chris's. <laughs> so we don't want Aaron Donald's contract. Uh, it's Creative Minds KC is where I got this shirt. It's, uh, I'll pin it for a second. You guys can, can check it out, but it's Creative Minds KC. I'm going to, I'm going to put it in the description too. There we go. If it'll let me, please update. There we go. All right. Now, if you refresh the page, you should be able to see um, where the shirt is from. No problem. Cole, can you make the next only member stream a bit earlier? You're in Israel? Um, I, it's hard for me to do earlier on a weeknight, but I do do them sometimes on a Sunday or a Saturday. No, not normally a Saturday, but sometimes we'll do it earlier on a Sunday. But yeah, I'll definitely keep that in mind um, for the next one for sure, man. All right, let me, I'm going to pull chat back up over here. There we go. Is there any football this weekend? No, I don't think so. There might be college ball. I know it started recently. Yeah, Cindy, no worries. Cole, predict the score Thursday. Um, I haven't thought about it too much, but I will say this. I think with if Chris Jones isn't there, there's no Aminahue. I think the Chiefs need to score well over 30 points to win this game. I, I think it could be... Um, a little bit of a shootout because no Chris Jones, no Aminahue, you know, there could be a chance where Jared Goff has a clean pocket, maybe more times than is ideal. I understand Spags and, and Joe Cullen, they're going to game plan around that and they're going to blitz corners, linebackers, safeties, like Spags is going to go nuts. Um, so I get it, but at the same time, I think the Lions are a good team, even with some of their players suspended. I know there's a couple receivers. Jamison Williams is one of them. Um, I still think the Chiefs need to probably plan on hanging up about 35 points on the Lions to walk away with the dub. I'm, I could be completely wrong, um, but I'm going to go somewhere, you know, they're both high-powered offenses, so both teams could be into the 30s. Chiefs win by five, one score, within one score. That's like my thoughts right now. Yeah, I'm a little bit early, Jeff. It's because I'm going to end this live stream about mm, 3.15, 3.30 because um, me and Danny are going away on a bit of a staycation. Jeff with another 20. Appreciate it. Back-to-back -back 20 bumps. Come to Grand Rapids and I'll buy you a couple beers at Founders. They have you on my, uh, then have you on my YouTube channel. Ooh, nice, dude. Hey, if we ever get out there, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would definitely be freaking awesome. 
I'll never turn down beer from anywhere. Detroit is looking like a contender this year. That's what I think so, too. They picked up a lot of slack toward the end of the season. Yep, they were on an absolute tear at the end of the season. It looked really good. It's not going to be a cakewalk at all. I 100% um, agree with you. Definitely can't sleep on these guys. Um, yeah, I think they're a good team, and they're going to come in prepared, you know, and a little, a little nerve-wracking, I guess, to some extent um, when it comes to... Even if Chris Jones shows up, he hasn't... Uh, I think Carrington Harrison just said he hasn't practiced with the team since February. I mean, even if he shows up, uh, I mean, it's going to take a little while to get in sync with the guys. I mean, you guys agree there, I'm sure. Third and short package, Bolton, Tranquil, Karloff, the Chanel. Okay. I like that. Real J-Rock. What's up, man? Made my day seeing you on AA, not the alcohol one. Yesterday, Cole, the only two YouTube channels I've ever membership. Uh, sad I missed it live. Woozy guy, thanks so much, man. It was a lot of fun to be on there with um, Patrick. Patrick Allen. So, yeah, it was awesome. Um, I was honored to get the ask, and that's a show I've watched for years. So I said, of course. Of course I'll, I'll jump on, man. Let's go. You know? I don't say yes a lot. I get invited to a lot of places. Not like in a... I'm not saying that in a prideful way, but just... It's, it's a lot of it's like up and comers and I'm getting asked all kinds of times and I just I don't have that much time in the week to hop on a bunch of other podcasts. However, I saw the invite from Patrick and I was like, man, I got to I got to do that. So that was a lot of fun. Can't wait till Thursday. Me either. Diego, it's getting close. What's up, Scooter? Good to see you. Mahomes lowest point total in an opener was 33 against the Browns in 2021. Yeah, we were talking about that Um, in a recent live stream. He's. 5-0, week one. 18 touchdowns, zero interceptions, 120-something passer rating. Um, let see if I can find that. Yeah, 133.9 passer rating. 5-0 and record, 1,500 yards, 18 touchdowns, and zero interceptions. So that's Patrick Mahomes on week one. That's what I'm saying. Like, I have... I, I think they can win, even without Chris Jones. Um, they're going to have to put up points, but... History does show that they're pretty good at putting up points uh, week one, especially. He's, I mean, they, they hung 40, 40 plus on the Cardinals last year. Now, the Lions ain't the Cardinals. The Lions are a good team, but I still think the Chiefs can get it done. What would be a hidden gem from the Chiefs uh, for fantasy? Hidden gem? Um, it kind of just depends on when you're able to get some of these players. I have, at the right times, I've drafted MVS. Um, if Pacheco's available at the right time, I'll take him. I just think a healthy Pacheco's going for over 1,000 yards this year just on the ground alone. Um, I think MVS could lead the wide receiver room in, in uh, production overall. We'll see. Uh, I'm fine to be wrong on that. Just That's kind of like my early gut feeling. So I don't know if those are like huge sleepers by any means, but those are a couple players that I'm looking at. If they're available, I'm not taking them super early, but if they're available at the right time, I'm definitely taking those guys. That's what King, Os King Osiris said is a hidden gem, still MVS. I'm like, I that's why I'm like, I don't know how much of a hidden gem that is, but people, like there's people around the kingdom that want the Chiefs to get rid of him, release him, trade him. And I'm like, He's going to probably have the most production of any receiver this season. Now, you want to talk about next year with MVS when he has an out in his contract and they're not going to have to eat all the dead cap? Like, yeah, okay, we could have that conversation. But um, I think I think MVS has slept on, dude. But uh, Honestly. When do the inactives come out for Thursday? Isn't it just like an hour and a half before the game? I think it's like right before the game. Um, Dano said it was MBS close to a thousand yards last year. He was at almost 700, but you got to think he probably had a misconnect with Mahomes on like five deep balls that if connected probably would have went for 900 yards and five touchdowns. So yeah, he, he was under 700 did have some misconnects though. Game day stream. Yes, sir. Shane, we will go live that night and stream it. Uh, do a, have the scoreboard, the play by play reaction, everything. Max, what's up? Hey, Cole, just wanted your perspective on why we have so many hyphenated names on the roster. CEH, MVS, FAU. Uh, we had ISM, Echo Boydo, Juju Smith-Schuster. He loves the dashes, man. I don't know why. That's actually hilarious, though. 
yeah. Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Felix DK Uzama, Clyde Edwards Alaire. I feel bad for the people making the jerseys. I mean, they got to be frustrated stitching all that. <laughs> Imagine the numbers that your stream's going to pull for week one against the Lions. Yeah, I don't know. Like, um, we had two, we, we peaked at 2,000 in some of the preseason games. I'll, I'll be curious to see what this season looks like. Um, we peaked at like 30, 3,600 in the AFC Championship game, which is the most I've had on a game stream. That was quite a bit. So, yeah, I, I have no idea what we're going to pull, um, but I appreciate the mods holding it down. That's for sure. Appreciate the mods more than you know, man. Just delivered Grubhub to Kendall Blanton. Elgin, no freaking way, dude. <laughs> Did you really? That's hilarious. Elgin, what's up, man? Gil with the 20 bomb. We've had three this stream. All 20 bombs. It's a 20, it's, it's a 20 kind of day. Must be. Appreciate appreciate the 20 bomb. Could be a bit big amount of people here on Thursday. Yeah, I'll be curious to see. It's a primetime game. So like most people are that's gonna be in network for most people. As long as you have access to the, the channel that's being played. You know. Um so I'll be curious. I have no idea what to expect for week one, but um we're gonna stream it, that's for sure. Just keep matriculating the ball down the field, boy. Good to finally be on a live stream. Tiberius, good to see you, man. Appreciate you being here. Hey, Cole, do you have a favorite piece of Chiefs memorabilia you own? What's up, Max? Um, I mean, we've gotten quite a bit over the past few months. Um, I mean, I have a signed Tyreek jersey, which is cool. A Derek Thomas jersey that I got for Christmas a little while back. I had a Derek Thomas jersey as a kid and grew out of it. So that's special. This my wife got me for Christmas last year. It's a signed um, Tony Gonzalez helmet, which is really cool. And then over here, we have a couple cool things that I really like. We have a signed Kelsey jersey, a signed Jamal Charles jersey. Um, I mean, there's a there's a lot over here, but those are some of my favorites um, for sure. We have a signed uh, Chris Jones mini helmet. So I thought about selling it to make money to pay Chris Jones what he wants, but I'll, I won't even get close to what he needs. <laughs> so never mind. Yo, what's up, uh, Rafe? He said, uh, what camera and mic do you use? Um, there should be an explanation point camera and explanation point mic command. But the camera I use is a Sony a7S III, and the lens I use is a Sony 16-35 to 2.8 G Master. The mic that I use is a Shure SM7B. When are you doing the Jamal Charles jersey? Never. Just kidding. I, we do have a duplicate one. Um, so I'll, I'll ponder that one because we have two signed Jamal Charles jerseys. We pro we might give one away. Um, that'll be a fun one to give away. That's one of my favorite running backs of all time. Yeah, I, I heard that. Nick Wright's predicting the Chiefs to go 20-0 and live. Yeah. Yeah. Fire, my dad had a Marcus Allen jersey and I have a classic Larry Johnson jersey. That's awesome, Max. Great jerseys. Derek Thomas was the best. Yeah. My favorite player is the player we watched growing up as a kid, me and my brothers. I need to get my Charles jersey dry cleaned. Do it. Got to. Do you like any college teams? Not really. Um, I don't follow college too heavy. Saturdays are my day off with the fam because I work every other day on the channel. So um, I don't really watch a lot of college ball. It's a sacrifice I had to make. You know, some of you, I mean, a lot of you in here are probably married or have kids. And, you know, there's sacrifices you got to make. So I, I sacrifice Saturdays willingly. I want to see my family. And because of that, I don't, I don't watch any college ball. What's up, Kayla? Today's your brother's uh, birthday? Hey, Jen, shout out to your brother's birthday. It's also my grandma's birthday. It's a good day. Good day to be born. What's up, Stranger Jake? Hola, our benevolent bearded bard of Busted Chiefs business. <laughs> What's up, dude? Uh, wondering about what franchise slash NFL records... Um, Pat, is that Pat McAfee? Pat MCV um, was talking about regarding Chris Jones's career. Hmm. I don't know that I saw that. Uh, what franchise slash NFL records? Do you guys know? Does anybody know what he could have been referring to? I'm not sure that I saw that. I mean, I'm happy to look it up if we can find it quickly. 
Cole, any advice on food you should eat game day? I mean, get barbecue if you can. That's what I would do. When is the underdog draft? Um, Normally when they fill up or September 7th. I'm good, Hudson. How are you doing, brother? Yeah, Stranger Jake, feel free to elaborate in the comments. If I see your comment, I'll, uh, I'll try to answer it if I can or we could look it up. Appreciate the five, brother. Just helped with a big installation at the Hoosiers Stadium. Makes me really want to watch some college ball. Nice, dude. That's fire. James with the five. There's some blue and orange in the crowd now. Sup, guys? What's up, dude? What's up, you Broncos fan? But you're a nice Broncos fan, so you're always welcome here. What up, man? Thanks for the five. Firehouse sub on game day would be really good. I actually want a sub so bad. I might eat one today. Sounds really good. Cole, what was your record prediction for the Chiefs? Um, Around 13 wins. Somewhere around there. 13-14. Uh, with no Chris Jones for a while. I mean, maybe they lose one. They shouldn't. But uh, the win shouldn't come down to one player being out, right? Uh, unless it's like if Patrick Mahomes is out, that's the most devastating. But the team should be able to pivot and still win these games. You know, there might be times where it's a little bit harder. The opposing QB has more time to sit back in the pocket, go through reads, but uh, I think they should still win around 13, 14 games. I mean, I don't... I understand Nick Wright said 20-0. and 0. I, I don't know about all that. It's so hard to go undefeated and win the big game, but I have them around 13, 14 wins. It's just... That's, that's the floor for Mahomes. Minimum 12 wins. They've won some uh, seasons 14 wins. Um, they host the AFC Championship game. <laughs> So that's just how it goes. Um, Pat McAfee was talking about how Chris Jones can't make money through endorsements like Mahomes and Kelsey. This might be his last chance to max out his contract. Yeah, um, Stolte, we've talked about this before on the channel. It was reported that Chris Jones made half a million dollars in endorsements last season. Okay? So think about this. Sure, Mahomes is willing to take a team-friendly deal, as is Travis Kelsey, at the time, Mahomes' deal was record-breaking, um, but now he's the seventh-highest-paid QB. Uh, Travis Kelsey is now, like, the fifth-highest-paid tight end because they just... Um, the Vikings tight end just got his deal done. But they're making hella money off the field in endorsements. Mahomes made $22 million <laughs> last year in endorsements, and reportedly Chris Jones made half a million. So, yeah, he is definitely fighting tooth and nail, trying to get every single penny he can from this contract. Um, you know, on one end, I don't blame him at the fan in me though, is like, please come back and help us win some games. I understand he's trying to get paid as much as he can. He doesn't make as much endorsements off the field, you know, 500,000 compared to 22 million last year, talking about Mahomes versus what Chris Jones reportedly made. I mean, that's a big freaking difference. That is a huge difference. Should Pat take a pay cut similar to Aaron to get Chris Jones taken care of? <sighs> I think the Chiefs have it. They can get him taken care of, but I think from... I, I shared about this at the beginning of the video. There's just a... Um, there's a line that the Chiefs aren't willing to cross. I think it's mainly because of Chris Jones' age. And uh, the most recent report on that contract is this. Hopefully this just pops right up. Yeah. Um, people I've spoken with, this is per the words of Tony Pauline. He said, um, believe the deal will get done soon and the two sides are not far apart. That being the case, I'm also told, this is what I'm talking about, Kansas City Chiefs are standing firm in their most recent offer and may not be willing to budge anymore. So, you know, if the reports are true and Chris Jones is gunning for Aaron Donald money, which is basically the highest paid non-quarterback in the NFL money, um, the Chiefs, I don't think, are willing to go that far. I bet you they they up some stuff from their initial contract offer, which is what has ramped up in recent talks. Andy Reid said, hey, they've been in discussions again recently. Um, but there's a line that they're not willing to draw. I mean, Mahomes could offer to take a pay cut, I guess, or restructure his contract to free some up. But the Chiefs still might be like, well, dude, we're just we're just uncomfortable with paying Chris Jones as much as he wants, you know, to make him the non-highest paid QB when he's almost 30 years old. So, I don't know. Um, he turns 30 in May of 2024. Um, but that's kind of where things are. We'll, we'll have to see what happens, man. 
I hope they get a deal done. I just, I'm, I am unsure. Mr. Bear Jangles with the five. Hope you all had a great staycation or have a great staycation. Looking forward to kickoff next week. Heck yeah, dude. Mr. Bear Jangles one. Um, where is it? Hello? I think my wife was already going to box it up and then I told her that I was going to, we're going to link for it. But yeah, last night in the members only live stream, Mr. Bear Jangles won a signed MVS football, which was pretty cool, man. So congrats on that, brother. Thanks for the five. It's got to be my favorite tee by far, Stone Cold Stunner. The link to this shirt, I don't get any money or kickbacks by plugging this, by the way. The links to this shirt are in the description. It's from a company called um, Creative Minds KC. Did you see Kelsey's comments to Chris Jones? Yeah, talked about it at the beginning of the stream. He was like asking if Chris Jones could please come back and then said he's a bit confused as to what's even going on. Doesn't understand it all. What's up, Jamarcus? Fed up with the contract games. I understand he wants to get paid, but he's asking too much and not not playing hurts the team. Problem is, not an internet killer. We don't we don't even fully know what he's asking. I mean, the reports are he's wanting Aaron Donald money. I don't know if we'll ever know the, all the ins and outs and the details, but I, I do agree. I, I think players like Travis Kelsey, they're looking around like, where is he? <laughs> uh, where is he at? And is he coming back soon? Because they want to chase another ring. Joshua with the membership. Let's go, man. Thanks for the uh, the membership, bro. The locker room is turning on CJ. Um, I don't know about that yet. You know, Mahomes spoke at the podium last week and said when Chris Jones comes back, we'll welcome him with open arms. But yeah, I think the longer he waits, the more, you know, maybe maybe they're not turning on him, but they might be looking at him like this. <laughs> like a little sideways, like, uh, what is going on? Fans are turning on him. I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> We've been seeing that. Becky said it's got to be frustrating for the team. I think so. He's your best defensive player. And he literally has not been there. He hasn't practiced with the team since February. Think about that. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. We're, we're going on almost seven months. Chris Jones hasn't practiced with the team. He didn't show up for the ring ceremony either. Crazy, man. The Vikings went ahead and overpaid Hawkinson. Yeah. Not sure if it was the correct move. Um, I think people are just seeing the trend of the salary cap. It's supposed to bump up again soon. Um, so yeah, anybody that's paid now, they're getting paid money that you're like, what? But in a couple years, he's not going to be the highest paid. You know what I mean? It was a lot of money. Yo, Michael with the two. Thanks for being you, Cole. Keep evolving. Michael, thanks so much, man. We're going to keep, uh, keep growing and grinding, man. Try to do all we can for the channel, uh, this season. I'm super excited about it. Got some cool things in the works. I mentioned it on the members only live stream last night, but we're starting a new Wednesday night show. It's a one hour live stream from eight to nine, eight to nine fifteen central time with a co-host. Um, super excited about it. We'll announce who it is next week. And, uh, the first show will be Wednesday, the day before the lions game. So super excited about that. And then just the coverage, man, I got a full-time editor this season. It was me pretty much by myself all last season. So, um, we're really going to be able to kick things up, kick things up a couple notches this season. I'm excited about that. Happy Red Friday, 92 Designs. Yes, sir. That's too much. KC isn't a team and paying high market like the... Yeah, I don't... I don't think they're going to pay that Aaron Donald money. I don't think the, the Rams should have paid Aaron Donald that money. That's so much, dude. I don't I don't know if that was a, a good idea. Cole, is Drew Tranquil the best linebacker? Uh, on the Chiefs? Mm, I'd probably say Nick Bolton is the most valuable. However, um, Tranquil is going to have a, a nice role to play. He's a converted safety, a coverage linebacker, and uh, it's going to be fire. Is your coast going to be Nate? No. Nate Taylor? Shoot, that would be fire. I'm really excited about my coast, though. I'll announce who it is soon. Um... I've already, I've already forgot what the heck I was talking about because I saw that question. Oh, Drew Tranquil. Yeah, linebacker. Um, I don't know if he's the best, but he is going to play a really nice role here in Kansas City. I think Willie Gay is probably the most athletic linebacker out there, but Nick Bolton, he's calling the shots. 
and uh, he's the leader. He's the leader there, and I think he's probably the most crucial linebacker on the team. They all have their roles. What's up, Ballooned Raccoon? What's your overall feel about the season? Um, I mean, I feel good. I'll feel better when Chris Jones comes back. Outside of that, I am happy with the moves that the Chiefs made. I'm pretty happy with the 53-man roster, and I'm excited to see them put in the work, man. I'm definitely excited for it. Um, I, I'm feeling good about this season, honestly. How are you guys feeling? Bolton and Gay, great pair. Facts, Travis Cole. Richie James be team's leading receiver outside of Kelsey. Hashtag bold take. Um, I mean, right now, I, my gut is MVS, but I've been high on Richie James since he signed. You guys have heard me say it plenty of times. He's the only receiver on the team that's it's that's had a NFL season with over 550 receiving yards. And he did that last year with the Giants, with Daniel Jones. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about Richie James. Uh, I don't know if by the end of the season he's the guy leading the room, but at the same time, I could see a scenario that plays out where that could happen. I could also see a scenario playing out where it's Kadarius Tony if he stays healthy. I just, I don't know when he's coming back. I don't think they're going to rush him back on the field. If they do play him Thursday, I, I can't imagine him playing full snaps. I mean, we talked about this last night, but why risk re-aggravating um, that knee that he just got cleaned up at the beginning of the season when you need him for the postseason? Think about what he did in the postseason alone. Even just the Super Bowl, longest punt return in NFL history. I mean, no offense to Sky Moore, he ain't, he ain't making that punt return. Not like that. He had a great one in the AFC Championship game, so don't get me wrong, he stepped up big, talking about Sky. But, uh, nah, I mean, Kadarius Tony is... I think he's too valuable to try to rush back out onto the field during the beginning of the season. Steve with the 10 bomb. Appreciate you, man. Let's go. Appreciate the 10. Prince with the uh, Prince Tiger Beats. What's up, man, with the five? They wouldn't have to pay the man Aaron Donald money if they would have kept his buddy Frank Clark. I know he wanted him there, and that is um, an opinion among some of Chiefs Kingdom. They think Chris Jones is potentially sticking it to them a little bit because they let Frank Clark walk. Now... Or they didn't even bring him back. Like, there was talks that Frank Clark was trying to get a deal done with KC even after being released, and the Chiefs save all that dead cap. But think about it. He's getting what? Like, I don't know, six, seven million dollars dead cap from the Chiefs and then signed a deal with the Broncos for, I don't even know. It, it was like three, four million, but the incentives could take it higher. The Chiefs weren't going to pay that for Frank Clark, not when they already owed him seven million dollars. They probably were like, yeah, we'll pay you like a million dollars, and then you have your seven mil dead cap. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, if Chris Jones is mad about that, then okay. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say, you know? It's a business. At the end of the day, the Chiefs made the moves that they thought was the best for them. They, they brought in Aminahue instead. And he's suspended for six weeks, so whatever. But Charles Aminahue is, what, 25, 24, 25, 26, somewhere around there. And Frank Clark is 30, or almost 30. They're really big about bringing in guys after their first deal, man. That's why I think it's a bit of a sticking point with Chris Jones and contract negotiations right now. Just because, uh, you know, just because he is close to 30. If, if Chris Jones was Nick Bosa's age, I'm not even sure we're having the same conversation. I think you quite possibly pay the guy Aaron Donald money and know that the cap's going up and he's only, he's only 25. You know, but no, Chris Jones is 29 and a half years old. Um, I think that has to be a little bit of a sticking point for Kansas City and company. CM's contract? Who's CM? Oh, Charles Aminahue. It was like uh, two years, 16 million, I think is what it was. They've got incentives built into it too, though. Two years, 16 million. Average salary of eight, obviously, total guarantees, 8.6, but he has some not likely to be earned incentives or even just likely to be earned incentives, and he's suspended for six weeks, and he's not going to hit those this year. So I think it's going to save the Chiefs a couple million dollars. He's got a cap hit of 4.4 million, a dead cap of 7.5, but he's got some uh, incentives built into that contract that he's not going to earn He's not going to earn some of them because he's going to be gone six games. Steve with the membership. Let's go, Steve. Appreciate you, man. 
Hey, any of your shirts you sell go up to bigger than 2X? Um, I think, like, my actual merch store doesn't go higher than 3 or 4. But, like, BreakingTea.com is another site that I use a lot. For a lot of my Chief shirts, they may go higher. I don't know. They have, they, they go up to 3X on some of their shirts. 5X. I don't know. Let me see if any of my shirts do on the store. I think the highest that it goes up to is a uh, 4X. They have a 4X tall. So I think 4X. Oh, there's a 5X. So we don't have a lot of shirts that'll that that go to that cuz you have to you have to get a different like a uh, style and material, but yeah, I mean this shirt and maybe a couple others on my store. Explanation point merch will get you there. Oh my gosh, my foot just slipped off the chair. Oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. It's just my foot just banged against uh metal on the chair just slipped off. Every little thing is gonna be all right. <clears throat> Yo, Travis with the five. What happened with uh, why Hubert can't find anything online? By the way, the original, uh, the original Chris, Christian running back number thirty. You talking about? Are you talking about your favorite being Christian Okoye? Is that what you're talking about? Because, dude, um, my dad had a Christian Okoye shirt growing up. Yeah, he had a he had a Christian Okoye shirt growing up. I don't I don't know what why it's up to right now. He's a free agent, I believe, though. Drafted by the Bengals in 2021. Then he announced he was returning to football. I think didn't we pick him up for a minute? I almost think we did. That's probably why you're asking. I don't know what happened. I mean, he didn't make cutdowns. I don't know. I don't know what happened. He was around during rookie minicamp. He might have been a tryout. Yeah, he never. I don't. I don't think he was a training camp. He didn't make the ninety. I'm pretty sure. If anybody knows otherwise, let me know. But I don't think he did. Somebody said, uh, impressive how many concurrent viewers you get. This one's a little higher uh, based on the title. I typically just title my live streams like Red Friday Q&A, and we average uh, during the season four to 600. Just kind of depends. But um, I think this title <laughs> uh, has more people in here, and it's because I, I uh, at the very beginning of this video, talked about all the Chiefs news for the first, like, yeah, 15 minutes or so, and that was what I kind of themed this title around. And it's just because me and Danny are going on a staycation, so typically what I would do on this day is drop a daily, like a 10-minute video that's all edited and pretty and organized, and I would have Troy editing that right now during my live stream. I would title the live stream whatever, Red Friday Q&A Hangout, come hang. Like, not as many concurrent viewers in that, but because I'm going on out uh, on the staycation, um, decided to just group it all in. Steve, thanks again for the membership. Mike Gerber with the five. Is your predicted 13 wins this season enough for us to host our AFC championship at Arrowhead this season? Um, I don't know if 13 wins will be enough. It could be. That's a, that's a lot of wins. That's only four losses. If the Chiefs win, if the Chiefs go 13 and four and they're not the one seed, I mean, hats off to whoever it is because that's pretty impressive. Now, I would rather than be 14 and three, 15 and two, or 20 and 0, like Nick Wright said. That's that's even better. Um, but, you know, it was honestly a fluke set of circumstances a little bit with the DeMar Hamlin situation that allowed the Chiefs to to host the Arrowhead Invitational. Now, obviously, teams had to lose and the Chiefs won. Like, it, it all it all was what it was. Um, but I think the Chiefs could get the one seed. I just, is 13 wins enough? I would hope so. And if it's not, freaking A. Hats off to the team. That is the one seed. I will say this, if it's the Bengals or the Bills, or uh, the Jags, or like somebody that the Chiefs play this season, they better get the W if they want the one seed. You know, if if the Chiefs and Bengals are tied at 13-4, and four, the Chiefs better win that regular season New Year's Eve game against the Bengals. <laughs> because that's where it's going to be like super important. 
because they could have the same record as some of these other teams, but you know, if they play them in the regular season, uh, you really, really want that tiebreaker. Mike Gerber with the five gifted, too. Dude, thanks for the five gifted, man. But yeah, Travis, good question again about um, Wyatt Hubert, and that's your first super chat, so thanks so much, man. I, If anybody knows in chat, let me know. He kind of just disappeared. I can't remember if he was just a tryout at minicamp or what he was. He wasn't on the 90. I don't believe. How's it a staycation if you're leaving to go there? Um, Because it's like, we're going like 20 minutes away. So I kind of call that a staycation. Like, we're not... My definition of a, of a vacation is like leaving the state, like going away somewhere. Um, but we're going like 20 minutes away. Maybe that's a, the wrong definition, but... Would you guys call that a staycation? I, I understand sometimes they're saying, well, that's if you stay at your house, but I don't know. We're staying in Kansas City. What is Chris Jones celebrating on his Instagram story? Yeah, I've seen that making the rounds. So I'll pull it up. I don't think he's so... I don't know. I don't know what to make of it. So Chris Jones' Instagram story looks as follows. I think that's his son, but he's here. I don't know where he is, but he's smoking a cigar. In a pool. Well, I hope you're enjoying your time off, Chris. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your time off. Oh, man. KC fan Dan with the three months. Cole, how is your betta fish? Still alive. We we bought one betta fish that died like two weeks in. And we think something was wrong with it from the jump. We got a new one like a month ago. And it's still alive. And it's swimming all around and happy. So it's freaking alive, dude. Chief Kelsey said that's a staycation. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Do you keep track of X players? Um, to some extent, yes. If you have a question about um one of them, let me know. I mean, like I follow, you know, there were some running backs that were getting signed. Damian Williams was on the Raiders for a little bit. Uh, I know Kareem Hunt's still a free agent. I will say this: former Chiefs players, um, they catch my eyes. Like when you see free agents listed or trades or signings, former Chiefs players catch my eyes. So I do I do try to keep up, but I don't know that I I don't go out of my way, if that makes sense, to follow them. You think Chris Jones should get traded? Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Like if you would have said before the draft, that's that's a whole nother thing. You know, they could have reloaded and moved way up into round one, could have grabbed I mean, pick your poison on a early defensive end or DT, you know. Well, I can't remember the kid's name that was going through the legal issues that was drafted super early. He's an eagle, right? Jordan Davis, is that who it was? I mean, freaking A, man. I, trading Chris, it's not Jordan Davis. What's, who is it? Yeah, it is. It is Jordan Davis. Yeah. I Googled Jordan Davis and some white guy popped up. I was like, that's not who I was thinking about. Uh, but I typed in Jordan Davis NFL. That's exactly who I was thinking about. Jalen Carter. No, that's who I'm thinking about. But there is a Jordan Davis football defensive tackle. I'm tripping. It's an American defensive tackle for the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, he's definitely one that I... that uh, They have Jordan Davis. Yeah, he was drafted last year, though. Yeah, it's definitely Jalen Carter. Thank you. So done with Chris Jones' Instagram cryptic drama. Yeah, I didn't even share that on Twitter today because I was like, dog. When he shared that story, I was like, nah, no thanks. Yep, it was a pretty big deal, Loaded Hot. It was a pretty big deal, man, with his situation. Shane Buchel is now a MPC offensive play calling informant for Buffalo. <laughs> Mr. Stevo, I'm in Vegas. When I get to hang at a hotel for a night, that's a staycation. Yeah. Okay, bet. See, that's what I thought. Charlie. Hey, Cole, random question. If the Chiefs end up losing in the playoffs, uh, instead of the Bengals, Bills, or whoever uh, looks really strong right now, who would you root for uh, if they ended up in the Super Bowl? Um, I don't know. I think, I don't know that I would root for really anybody. I'll, I'll call the game, and I want to see a good game, and I'll probably go hype on dope plays and stuff like that, but um, I don't know... You know, I don't know. I guess it would depend on who plays and 
and um, the storylines behind them. But not sure I would just like say I'm rooting for this team and I hope they win. I just I hope it's not you know what was that recent Super Bowl with the Patriots and oh, I can't even remember who they played, but the game sucked. It was like six to three at halftime or something stupid. What was that game? I just don't want it to be like that. <laughs> Matt said, correct answer is we root for the NFC. I mean, that's fine, too. Antonio, thanks for the kind words, man. I appreciate you. LBK, hey, cool, gotta go, but love what you do, and thank you. I'll see you Thursday night. Hey, let's go, man. Appreciate you hanging out, brother. Travis, thanks again, bro. Instead of talking about the Chiefs so much, could you spend time talking about Aaron Rodgers' facial expressions, body language, and state of mind? <laughs> Dude, I've been seeing some funny mic'd up stuff from him. I um, think they've been pushing it because of... Uh, Whatever, uh, hard knocks. I saw that one clip of him getting into it with somebody on the bay. I don't remember who he was playing, but Aaron Rodgers was like, this dude pushed him like five steps after, and uh, he was like, "Who are you? What are you doing? I don't even know who you are." Aaron Rodgers was saying that, and the the guy said back, "I don't know who you are." Aaron Rodgers is like, "Yeah, right." Well, he said BS. Actually, that's kind of funny. Final score prediction for Thursday. I'm gonna go. 35 31 Chiefs right now. Matt said, Cole, careful with the tank seven. It'll make your hair fall out. Maybe that's why I have no hair. It's got to be why. Oh, I know every tribe. It's all good. Not to rehash anything, but I missed something with Jones. Yeah, go to the beginning of the video. I talk about it for like 15 minutes. Well, not 10 minutes. Yeah, go to the very beginning. I give all the news updates right then. Is Brand in here? Brand, are you in here? Or anybody that can edit a Nightbot command? I'd love a exclamation point uh, beginning or something that says, hey, for all the news updates, go to the beginning of the stream. It'd be awesome. Aaron Rodgers is full of himself. Well, it was funny because the player was like, he was like, I don't even, I don't even know who the guy was. But he pretended to not know who Aaron Rodgers was. I mean, come on, dude. Anybody. Like, it was a horrible attempt of a troll back. Basically. All joking aside, Tank 7 is the Goat Boulevard beer. It's so good, man. So good. Um, Bill signed Shane Buchel to get call signs from the Chiefs. Um, I mean, it was Buchel's choice. I think the Chiefs offered him to sign in KC, and he wanted a fresh start elsewhere. Now, could the Bills want... Uh, um, how do I want to word this? Could the Bills have ulterior motives for signing Shane? Yes. Um, you know, which sucks. It's part of uh, part of it, but I, I wish him the best in his next chapter, man. It, it still sucks. D... Da la da la Chiefs. It's gotta be the LA Chiefs. Maybe. Thanks for the membership, man. Aaron who? Aaron Rodgers. Is Tank 7 real hoppy? It's an American size on an eight and a half percent. 45 IBUs. So it's it's pretty enjoyable to me, but I kinda like beer like this. You know, it's not as like strong to me taste wise. And I'm not the best explainer of what beer tastes like. It's not as strong as like an IPA. But it's good. Following you on TikTok and YouTube. Let's go, Antonio. Cole should get Chuck Norris because his beard says no. <laughs> What's the most annoying narrative coming into this season? Ooh, most annoying narrative? Um, I am way less annoyed this offseason because the Chiefs proved everybody wrong after the Tyreek Hill trade, won the Super Bowl, Mahomes got Super Bowl MVP, he was banged up, had a hurt ankle. Um, what else? Banged up, had a hurt ankle, and then yeah, he won Super Bowl MVP, he won league MVP. So, I feel I was way more annoyed last year. I felt like I felt like for whatever reason I was having to defend the greatness of Patrick Mahomes for like no reason. Like it made no sense. I understand he did not play well in the second half of the AFC Championship game against the Bengals that year. Like, I was there. I was at the freaking game. However, I am way less annoyed. Um, I was also 
way annoyed at the hype of the Broncos last year with Aaron, or not Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson going there. Um, but annoying narratives this year, I don't know. I don't even know if there is any crazy annoying ones. I mean, I've seen some stupid, like, one-off takes. Um, I, I don't I don't know how the Jets are going to do. I need to see it before I believe it. I don't know how the Broncos are going to do. I need to see it before I believe it. Skip Bayless. Oh, God bless. Most annoying narrative this offseason. Anything Skip Bayless is saying? True. The Purdy narrative is annoying. I mean, I'm rooting for the kid, man. I am surprised. I am surprised that the 49ers traded Trey Lance. You're putting a lot of eggs in a limited sample size of Brock Purdy. And on top of that, um, he's coming off of surgery on his elbow. And then the backup is... This is a freaking backup. Sam Darnold. <laughs> I think the 49ers put a lot of, a lot of uh, eggs in the Brock Purdy basket. Becky said, this is why we say Cole should stream instead of go to games. The last three postseason games I went to for the Chiefs, they lost. <laughs> so, I don't know what that says about me, but uh, if I go to a game, it's going to be in the regular season. I'm not going to go in the postseason, that's for sure. The Jets hype is annoying. Yeah, it was a, it was a bit of an, of an annoyance. I think it bother, that bothered me less because they weren't in our division. So I was way more annoyed last season when the Chiefs have take, taken a step back. Russell Wilson's a Bronco. The Broncos are going to win the West. Things are changing. Tyreek Hill's gone. The Chiefs are retooling. Like, that was way more annoying. I, I, this has been the best offseason I can ever remember as a Chiefs fan. Because remember when they won Super Bowl 54? Um, COVID hit, like, right after. And they, like, they didn't get to do, like, a lot of the stuff that they normally did when you win the Super Bowl. So... So this this offseason's been freaking glorious. <laughs> it's been awesome. Becky said, we still love you, but no postseason games for you. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Grabbert. Yeah, stay home, Cole. Stay away, said... <laughs> okay, fair enough. It was annoying when Allen was being anointed of a Holmes-level QB. You had a good short on that nonsense last year. I still got people commenting on that so upset. I have I have a few Josh Allen versus Mahomes shorts and they they get mad every time. But it's just he's not on the same level. So he's still a good quarterback, but you know, not on the same level. Remember people last season saying we would lose the division? Yep. Seen it. Seen it all last season. It was crazy. Can you speak English when it comes to beer? It's good. It's 8.5%, but it's a really good beer. So definitely try it. If you can try it on draft, if you can try it on draft, it's it's excellent. 13 seconds. Yup. Is Burrow even healthy? No. I mean, he's back at practice, but I and I don't follow the Bengals that heavy. I, I don't think he's cleared. I don't think he's cleared for a full go. Like, I don't know if he's starting week one or not. Draft beer is always better facts. Is it possible for Russell Wilson to have a winning season this year? It's possible. They'd go about... They'd have to go... 9-8. and eight. <laughs> I feel like that's their max ceiling. Just above 500. Um, it would be... I don't know. I guess I could see that. I see a way it could play out, but I need to see how they do first. I'm not going to make any crazy predictions about the Broncos until I see if they still don't suck. Like, I understand Sean Payton's a great coach, but uh, they were not good last year. It was horrible. Jackson, live from Wichita. What up, man? That calf is going to bug him all season if they don't let him rest. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure they rush him back out there just yet, but they've been pretty... Zach Taylor's been weird. I mean, from what I saw, he's always just saying, yeah, he'll return shortly. A few weeks is a few weeks. They asked him again later, and he's like, well, it's a little bit closer to when I said a few weeks ago. And then they're like, can you elaborate on how long? And he said, no, <laughs> basically. But he has been out there practicing. Uh, can Lamar Jackson finally reach the Super Bowl? Answer is most likely no. Um, I mean, Lamar Jackson is, what is he in the postseason? One and three? One and four? Lamar Jackson playoff record. He's uh what is he? I think he's one and three. Yeah, he's one and three. 
Um, he hasn't. He lost his first two. He won the wild card round against the Titans in 2021, I believe. Yeah, and then lost against the Bills in the divisional, and then the Bills lost to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game that year. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know if he can win that big game. It's so hard to do it. I do have a lot of respect for the Ravens, though. Um, I think they're a good team. really like their coach, too. <laughs> What's the latest on Jackson Mahomes? I don't follow him too much, but I haven't seen anything since that initial court hearing. I haven't really seen much. What's up, Adam? He says, Cole, how's your health now? Um, it's still a work in progress. I, I was at the doctor this morning getting some more tests done and still trying to figure some things out. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been all right. It's not the best. Uh, could always be worse is my mindset right now. Uh, Jordan, can someone please tell me what Andy Reid said? Yeah, go back to the beginning, a.k.a. unclapped. Or, you're clapped, a.k.a. you're clapped. Go to the beginning. I talked about it for the first 15 minutes. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate the kind words, man. I hope Derek Carr balls out for the Saints. Raiders front office are so bad. Yeah, I do I do have the, the Raiders going fourth, or getting fourth in the AFC West. I'm rooting for Derek Carr a little bit. Yeah, I definitely am. You know, it helps that he's now with an NFC team. That pretty much that helps. You know, he's not with the um, the Raiders in a division rival. Even though he beat Patrick Mahomes like one time, <laughs> or something like that. Uh, who's your top three wide receivers? Travis Kelsey. <laughs> all, right, all right, I'll leave Kelsey out of there. He's a tight end technically, but one of the one of the top five pass catchers in the NFL over the last five to six years. Um, top three. I'm probably gonna go right now, and people disagree with me, but it's fine. I'll, I'll probably go Devonte Adams, uh, Justin Jefferson, and then fight it out about number three. Could it be Tyree? Could it be Cooper Cup? Jamar Chase? Um, they're all right in there. I, I think. Justin Jefferson is the future of the NFL, but I don't know that in my eyes he surpassed Devontae yet. I think he's on his way, though. What did you miss about Andy? Uh, go to the beginning of the stream. I talked about it for like 15 minutes. You think Denver has too many injuries? Yeah, injuries are already starting to pile up, man, for, for the Broncos. It's uh, unfortunate. I, I'm saying that because... Not because I wish the Broncos great success this season. I hate injuries. Uh, I don't care what team it's for. Typical said, not saying Burrow gets carried by his wide receivers. But they are what scares me about the Bengals, not him. Um, I mean, Burrow's a, a great quarterback, man. Um, if Mahomes didn't exist, I would have I would have loved Burrow on our team. I mean, I think Andy Reid could have done great things with him. I'm not saying um, you know, I'm not speaking any I'm not trying to talk lightly, I guess, of Patrick Mahomes or anything like that, um, because that's our QB. That's QB one. It's not. It's not a debate. Um, but they do have a great, probably the best. The Bengals have the best wide receiver trio in the NFL. Broncos being better is a low bar. Well, I say this, uh, TJ Rick. If if I was to climb up to my to the top of the tree outside my house, it's about 50 feet high, and I jump off, my body is going to literally bounce off the floor probably a few feet. So I always say the Broncos literally slammed the ground last season and it's only up because once you bang the ground, <laughs> your body would literally bounce. So that's kind of what I'm saying about the Broncos. Like they'll probably do better, but not that much better. Chris Jones, 40 yard dash will always be the greatest moment in NFL history. <laughs> what? Oh God bless. Everybody's making a big deal of what Travis Kelsey said about Chris Jones, too. Like, it wasn't a serious plea. I mean, he, he was kind of trolling around like you could tell right at the beginning of what he was saying. He was like, please come back, Chris Jones. And then he went back to his normal voice. It was 
and then was talking seriously about it, saying he didn't understand, was confused, but hopefully he comes back because he wants to chase another ring with him. I don't think he was literally begging him to return. Um, but he wants him to return and de definitely said, hey, this is me. Like, come on, come on back. But I don't think he was like literally like, please come back. Not that, That's not what I took away from the clip. Why isn't Justin Herbert giving more respect? I mean, I feel like I have a lot of respect for him. I'd put him in a borderline top five quarterback. Uh, I think part of his issue is the Chargers charger. Uh, Staley, like, has, like, mental glitches during games and forgets how to coach. And then uh, they just get so banged up and injured. Um, I like Justin Herbert a lot. I have a lot of respect for him. I have a lot of respect for the Chargers. I did have a good time drinking Chargers tears last year after they whined, cried, pissed, and moaned for five months about the refs giving the Chiefs the W. I'm just like, good God, you little babies. Like, go drink some more soy milk. Getting so tired of the loser mentality. That's the only annoying thing was probably the fans. But I actually have a lot of respect for the Chargers organization as a whole, and I think their social media team is top notch. Yeah, poor Herbert stuck on a, co uh, a cursed team. Cole, I am excited for six days. Yeah, because game one. Yes, sir. Not the Jones 40. Bro, it was all hanging out. He put it all on the line, baby. Are you posting again today? Yeah, I'll do a YouTube short, but that's it. Any troll vids this year? Yes, sir. We'll do some. We'll definitely do some. Ah, Chief for life. Cole, I have a bone to pick. Heard CDOT mention something about the Chiefs defense built around Jones. I don't believe that. Look at our linebackers. Um... I mean, I would have to probably hear what Carrington said, um, but I, I don't. I don't think he's far off. I think the. I think Chris Jones is the centerpiece of the defense. I've said that in my videos. Um, now we have a really good linebacker room, but I don't. I don't think the defense is built around Nick Bolton. I don't think the defense is built around Willie Gay. Um, I think if you pick you, you at, well, we'll just freaking do a poll. We'll just do a poll. Because I, I think I'm going to be in the majority opinion here. Um, I'm going to name like a few a few players on the defense. Uh, we could go... We could also go... Justin Reed? Could have gone Legereus Sneed. I'm just not sure... Who's the defense built around? I mean, I think it's built around Chris Jones. Um, you know, if he's not getting pressure on the QB, other guys are because Chris Jones is triple teamed. So I, I think it is built around Chris Jones. However, I did say earlier, I still think the Chiefs can win plenty of games without Chris Jones. It's just going to be harder at times, and Mahomes is really going to have to go off. I mean, which I, I think he could do. I mean, think about... Uh, was it 2018? I mean, well, 2018 was the season he went for 5,000 yards, 50 touchdowns, but like he carried at times. You know, I think Mahomes is going to have to do that. You already do the Chiefs Saholic interview? Not yet. Uh, that's supposed to be in like two weeks. But yeah, blitz packages galore. I agree. All over the place. Stop the count. It's over. I get excited about polls. Yay to the troll vids. Yeah, we'll do some more. You're talking about like the fan reaction after a game, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, we'll do some. Um, I am going to focus first and foremost on like the longer dailies, the game recaps and stuff like that. But we will definitely do some of those. They might be done as YouTube shorts, not as like a long form vid. But yeah, we'll definitely do them. <laughs> what about Breland? Are you wanting to know how his court case is doing? Is that what you're saying? I haven't heard an update, if that's what you're asking. Uh, Nick Bosa and the 49ers reportedly have a $4 million per year gap in contract expectations. What does he want? The 49ers just don't have any money. They're paying everybody. Cole, can we possibly get Mike Evans? Not this year. Next year? Sure. However, 
He's going to be 31 years old. Um, He's 30 now. He turns 31 in August. He'll be 31 and a half, 32. If, the, if Mike Evans doesn't stay a buck for life, which I saw that report surfacing that he wants to stay a buck for life, but contract negotiations haven't been going well, they kind of gave an ultimatum. Hey, you have till the start of the season. You know, if not, we're just going to start looking elsewhere. He'll play football this year for the Bucks, but he's going to he's going to move on. Um, sure, he could maybe end up in Kansas City, but it's going to be like a one year deal. I don't see Brett Veach paying a 32 year old receiver uh, a multi year contract, even though like, hey, Mike Evans has had nine, nine, uh, 1000 yard seasons in a row. I mean, that's freaking insane. The, the record is, uh, isn't it Jerry Rice with 11? I mean, he's on, he's on legendary pace, man. I can tell you. Yeah, Jerry Rice has had 11. Mike Evans has had nine. That's crazy, dude. Joy said, love your shorts. Videos, uh, videos that is. Yeah. Yeah, you can't even see my shorts. But yeah, heck yeah, we're going to drop one after the stream. We're going to drop another short. Are you scared of the Lions? I don't know that I'm scared of the Lions, but I, I have a healthy respect uh, for the Lions. I think they're a good team. They were on fire the back half of last season. They made some good some good moves, I think, in the offseason. Um, you know, they have few players suspended for gambling or whatever, but, but um, yeah, I have a healthy respect for them for sure. Not scared, though. Every Tribe Coffee, when you produce a weekly 40-minute TV show full of guests, different spots, etc., that could get picked up on TV. Oh, when will you? <laughs> I don't know. I'd be down. I think, I will say this, I think Pat McAfee is, um, even though he's a former NFL player, I think he's paving the way for creators. I mean, he pretty much just did his thing on YouTube and became such a big deal that uh, networks paid attention to him. Um, if that ever happens for me one day, cool, but if not, I'm totally fine with just staying on YouTube. Yo, bro, shirt is fire. Thanks, dude. Stone Cold Stunner. Uh, link to the shirt is in the description, by the way. Um, a company from, or called Creative Minds KC. They sent it to me. They're a local Kansas City company. Local Kansas City company. CreativeMindsKC.com. Shop now. Their shirts in, that shirt's in here. I, I wore this before, too. The world champ. Pat who, that's who, and then that Chris Jones shirt's in here too somewhere. Right there. Pretty fire. So, yeah. You think the Jets will be hard? I'll get back with you in a few weeks. I need to see how they do. You think uh, we finna win the Super Bowl? I mean, I freaking hope so. You should stream on Twitch, make double the money, bigger fan base. Twitch is a weird place. Um, I don't know how much pull I would have over on Twitch. I mean, when I go live on here, I'm going live to 152,000 potential people. I mean, we only average, you know, whatever, five, 700. Depends, like in the off season, it dips. In the season, it picks up. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think there's value in maybe trying to stream on Twitch one day, but I don't think it would be a stream like this. I think it would be like, me gaming or just something else that's extra and I want to pull pull away from YouTube to diversify. That'd be that'd be the only reason I think your Twitch is garbage. Yeah, I used to stream on Twitch. Like I used to do some gaming stuff. Um it's a just a whole different platform. Our chances of repeating without Jones goes way down. It goes down. I don't know, way down. Um I mean he's important. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like we're talking about Patrick Mahomes not playing. I mean Blaine Gabbert for the season. Uh, probably say the Chiefs go 10 and 7. <laughs> I mean, um, but you never know. I think Chris Jones is important, though, so don't don't mistake what I'm saying there. You'd love to see me play Madden? Dog, I'd get... I'm not good at Madden. That's the problem. Catching the updates on YouTube is difficult. That's how I miss, uh, miss these sometimes. Well, I, I will say this. I go live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and then Friday at 2. That's pretty much my live streams. Now I am introducing a Wednesday night show and I am introducing, well, and then I'm going live during games. But yeah, I put out a lot. So I understand like not everybody can watch everything. 
Elliot said, it's strange being a Chiefs fan now. It amaz- it's amazing to be part of the success, but now every year without a Super Bowl win feels like a bust. Yeah. No, exactly. Uh, Mr. Moore said, didn't know you did live. Yeah, I go live. Yeah, quite a bit, man. Hang out with you guys, and we call the games. Uh, what do you think we could get for Chris Jones if he was traded? I mean, at least a first and a couple others and maybe a player. Um, the question is, if he was traded now, who's really, who's really going to want to pay what Chris Jones wants right now, plus give up the draft capital and or a player this late? Like, it's literally the start of the season. Uh, I just feel like, I mean, it could happen. I just, I just don't know how likely that scenario is. Blue and Silver said, what are your projections for Justin Ross? Um, my projections right now, two to 400 yards. If he crushes that, great. But I kind of see him playing a Jody Fortson role right now based on even what Brett Veach said in his presser. He said they're going to have certain packages for Rasheed Rice and Justin Ross where other receivers will just kind of be available for everything. And they'll kind of work their way up from that, talking about Rasheed and Justin Ross. Um... The reason why I think he'll play a Fortson role a little bit, at least to start, is Brett Veach in his presser the other day said, Justin Ross is a big-bodied guy. He said that, right? And then he just immediately starts talking about Jody Fortson, like right after that. For exa- and he's just like, for example, Andy Reid used to draw up particular plays for Jody Fortson, short yardage and red zone, and then he basically inferred that that's what they would be doing with Justin Ross, and he can have more opportunities as the season moves along, I understand there's people out here saying uh, Justin Ross is going for 750 plus yards. He's going to lead the receiver room in, in yards. I will be more inclined to believe that next year. I'm basically putting very little expectations on him this year, just because I have no idea what to expect. And if he if he does more than two to 400 yards, that's a that's a win. I'm totally fine to be wrong. You know what I mean? Um, I. As long as the Chiefs are stacking W's, I don't really care who's getting what yards. Just my opinion. Chris Jones' thing is seemingly comparable to... uh, I think you mean Orlando Brown Jr. Wanting more than we can... Yeah, yeah. Wanting more than we can give and then leaving for less somewhere else. I hope he doesn't. Can you stream the next game? Yeah, I will. Thursday night. We're going to go live during the Chiefs-Lions game. Yes, sir. Stranger Jake. I hate that due to our success, we are all bandwagons fans. Bro, I get a bandwagon comment on my one of my social media channels every day. Um, I mean, I only started this account in January of 2022. But I'm born and raised in Kansas City. Grew up watching the Chiefs my whole life. I mean, was I an expert when I started the channel? No, I, I would watch the Chiefs on Sunday and listen to the pressers after the game. And then, I mean, that was about the extent of it. But I watched them all the time. And then when I said, hey, I'm going to start a Chiefs channel, I think there's... There's something I could do here and provide some good value for the community. You know, I started diving in just way deeper that way, and now it's my full-time job, and I live, eat, sleep, and breathe it. But, um, but yeah, I don't know what a bandwagon fan... Like, I was born in a Chiefs jersey in 91. <laughs> so I don't think that's a bandwagon fan. And that's a lot of you guys. I mean, think about uh, Arrowhead back with John Elway was asking the ref, please, please turn the volume down, ref. <laughs> the ref threatens timeouts and didn't even help. Um, when did they beat the, the sound record? 142.2 decibels. Uh, that was, when was that? 2013, 2014? That was before Mahomes. I grew up in California, so I'm a Warriors fan. And when the 49ers traded Montana, I became a Chiefs fan at nine. There you go. Yeah, they might think you're a bandwagoner, Joel, just because you don't live in the area. But if you've been a Chiefs fan for that long, you ain't. If we sign Chris Jones to a big contract, how do we play, uh, pay Sneed, Gay, and Bolton in the future? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, Flex and Chad. I think that's something um, Brett Veach and company need to – they're, they're going to weigh it out. I mean, you can't pay everybody everything that they want and then try to pay some of your future players too. I don't. I think they let Sneed walk at this point in time, um, not because he's a bad player. They just – they don't spend a lot of money on cornerbacks and have a very pretty decent track record of finding – great defensive backs in the draft. And they just freaking picked up another one. They basically stole Darius Rush from the Colts. He was a fifth-round pick um, from this year's draft that didn't make the roster. 
and the Chiefs claimed him off waivers and have him on a four-year rookie deal, a fifth-round draft pick this year. Big-bodied guy, ran a 4.3640, same size and height as Joshua Williams and Jalen Watson, has a 9.8 relative athletic score. I mean, freaking fire, dude. Um, super excited about him. I don't know if he's going to jump right in and, and make a difference. He's got to learn the playbook and stuff. But I think um, I do think, though, Creed Humphrey is – needs serious consideration of paying Nick Bolton as well. There's also Trey Smith. I mean, you can't pay everybody, so they'll have to figure it out. But yeah, when you're talking about deals with Chris Jones, you, you got to look at the next couple of years um, as well. I agree. I'm glad I'm not the freaking GM, man. <laughs> it would be so hard. I think Willie and Sneed probably gone. I think you're right. I'd love to see Willie stay and Sneed. I love his story, bro. Sneed, bro, both of his parents served years in prison he lived with his grandparents and his older brother raised him and it's his older brother that passed away uh two years ago i think it was um during the season um sneed's story is crazy i love sneed i i would love to see him stay i just i'm not sure like you can't pay everybody it's it's too hard daniel with the gifted let's go man appreciate you bro john elway standing in the end zone whining to the ref to tell arrowhead to be quiet <laughs> he really did he steps back from the huddle it just goes like this Hilarious. Pran, proud bandwagoner. I can't talk. Proud bandwagoner. So what? Uh, where are all the Pats fans now that Brady is gone? <laughs> they're definitely quieter. I think I think they're a little bit more, more chill now. And we're riding the high. Do you think Baltimore will win the division over the Bengals? That's a good question, Daryl. I think they could give them a run for it. But uh, I'd probably right now I have the Bengals winning it. I choose the O-line in the relevant reasoning against Chris Jones. Yeah, I mean, what's up, Optimistic James? Yeah, man, as long as Mahomes is protected, I mean, if he can go through multiple reads without being flushed from the pocket, it's over. It's freaking game over, dude. So I, I would, I think the Chiefs have learned just keep a good O-line around Mahomes and you're you're pretty all right. <laughs> I wouldn't even care if they just kept most of their money in the, in the O-line and they... Surrounded Mahomes with whoever. Like, after Travis Kelsey retires, which that's a few years away. We don't have to talk about that. But if they just keep investing in dogs in the trenches for Mahomes, who cares who's around him outside of the O-line? He'll make it work, especially with Andy Reid there as coach. They'll, they'll make it work. Now, I'm not saying don't bring in weapons. Don't get me wrong. But I would love for them to just keep prioritizing and investing in the O-line. Leo Chanel could fill that role uh, with Tranquil interchangeably. Um, well, wait. I don't, I mean, Leo Chanel's primarily a run, um, like a run, what do I want to say? He's in when they're, you know, in early downs when there could be a great chance of a run, but meanwhile, Tranquil is a coverage linebacker. So I feel like they play a couple different roles. Do you think they could be used interchangeably? And if they let Sneed go, that would break my heart. Yeah, he's he's one of my favorite players, too. You live east of Springfield? Oh, nice, dude. Are you a believer in Trey Smith? Yeah, I mean, I love Trey Smith, man. He's a, a great guy. Um, probably the steal of the draft in 2021. What, what year was he drafted? They all kind of blend. Was he 2021 or 20? I think he was 2021. Trey Smith draft year. I think he was, was like sixth or seventh round. Yeah, he's a tw yeah, 2021, 226 pick. I am a believer in Trey Smith. I, now, do I think they're going to pay him long term? I, I have no idea. Um, you got to think Joe Tooney is not getting any younger. So maybe they opt to pay Trey Smith and Creed Humphrey, and then they find, you know, rookies on the left side. I just, I don't know. Me too. Yeah, Creed Humphrey's awesome, Jonathan. As long as Mahomes has one big body receiver that can run routes, he'll find a way. He'll find a way. You already know. Yep, R Leo is pri uh, primarily a run-stopping linebacker. Yeah, that's why I'm like, I don't know if you could use him interchangeably with Tranquil. I mean, maybe if you're talking about blitzing and stuff. Like, I think they could both blitz pretty well. Um, but Tranquil's a converted safety. He looks like a DB out there, almost. Creed not making top 100 makes me sad. Facts. What was all the hype about Carson Wentz? 
Um, just a report from Jeremy Fowler of ESPN that the Chiefs have kept communication with Carson Wentz. And it's still a possibility they could bring him along. If they do, we're talking practice squad, in my opinion. Jonathan Ray said, can we draft, please draft a legit wide receiver one? I think um, once Travis Kelsey is done or they're seeing the end of the road there, I think you'll you'll see a little bit more. Because without Kelsey, I mean, that's wide receiver one, right? I think they'll have to – you got to give Mahomes a couple weapons. But outside of that, just get him, get him some solid depth and it's it's good to go. IPA, nice. It's a Tank 7 and American Saison, but it's good. Cole, do you think you guys will beat Detroit Thursday? What's up, Jacob? I mean, I have them right now. I'm going Chiefs 35, Lions 31, but uh, I I'm riding a little bit on the fact that Andy Reid is a wizard coming off a of bye week, and this is a glorified bye week. Um, he's 9-1 and one, week one with the Chiefs. Mahomes is 5-0, and oh, 18 touchdowns, zero interceptions. Uh, yeah, he at 1,400 yards, I think, 133 passer rating. So, yeah, I'm going with the Chiefs week one. But I'm not sleeping on the Lions, though. They're a good team. Jonathan said, that's true. I can't believe I forgot about Kelsey. Yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. I think once Travis Kelsey is done, which, again, that's a few years away, that's when I think the Chiefs are going to have to put a little bit more of a priority slash emphasis on a weapon or two. Now, he had weapons. He had Hill and Kelsey. But they traded Hill away, and they you know, went young and recouped some assets and they won the Super Bowl. Um, but there will be a time when they have to surround him with uh, some some higher profile weapons probably, but you have a high profile weapon, one of the best in the game in Travis Kelsey. I mean, he's the, he's the best tight end in the league. Um, one of the best pass catchers in the league, so that definitely helps. Kareem Hunt, maybe. Why they only went with three running backs? I think Kareem Hunt's future in Kansas City is done. I think he's when he got let go, I think that was the end of the road for him. Would love to be wrong because Kareem Hunt was special, in my opinion. He, you know, if he wasn't an idiot and lied to the team and, he, you know, what he did, like, yeah, I never put a hands on, on, a, on a lady. But I wonder, like, you know, what he did. He kind of shoved her over or whatever with his foot. I can't remember the – I saw the film. It's been, it's been years. But, you know, if he would have just been honest with – Clark Hunt and everybody and said, yo, I effed up, dude. Like, camera footage could come out. This is what happened. But he lied. You break their trust, it's over. Now, with that being said, Kareem Hunt was special, dude. I think he would have, I yeah, it would have been an, an incredible guy to keep on the team, man. Sucks. Uh, what's the latest on Kareem Hunt? He's just a free agent. I think uh, he had a few offers and wasn't happy with any of them. Check all these notifications happening right now. Okay, nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm just making sure I'm, we're not missing any Chiefs notifications. Uh, this is cool, I guess. Since 2020, quarterbacks who have had the most 400-yard passing games. Mahomes, 6. Prescott and Joe Burrow, 5. Since 2020? That's such like a random year. Why, why did they choose 2020? I always wonder that. Why do we think? Yo, Cynthia with the membership. Appreciate that. Jim with the two. Thank you, Jim. Tape I saw on Leo last year had me so stoked regardless of the draft grades the other stations had on him. I thought he crushed it with the opportunities he had. I'm excited for him year two, Don. I mean, he... Uh, he... Uh, you know, he had a lot of competition in that linebacker room for a rookie. Alexander said, yeah, he technically never put his hands on her since he kicked her. Yeah, I mean, they had to let him go. You know, you're on film doing that. You got to go, man. Uh, can't do that. There's no place for that. So, which is also why the NFL cracks down on DV stuff so hard on NFL players. Even, like, a minute Hugh getting six games without any video proof or anything. Like, they don't play around with DV stuff. Um, meanwhile, uh, Alvin Kamara gets three games. Um, on camera, like they literally knocked the guy out cold and kept beating him. I mean, that is inexcusable as well. 
but the, the league just don't play. Be the Grim Reaper. They don't play with uh, um, DV stuff, man. Not at all. What's up, Monique? She always says, hey, Michael. Hey, my pasty brother. <laughs> What's up, Monique? We won the Super Bowl with Mahomes only throwing for 182 without Jones. I don't know if we can do that every game. Um, you're In Super Bowl 57, is that all he had? Chiefs, Eagles, box score. I mean, part of that, too, is um, uh, Nick Bolton's scoop and score. Yeah, he had he was 21 for 27, 182 yards and three touchdowns. I mean, he had one incompletion in the second half. Unbelievable. Um, yeah, I don't... I mean, Nick Bolton had that scoop and score. They won. But I, I don't know that you're... You know, you don't win the AFC Championship game without Chris Jones and MVS. Those are two players. Second half was a clinic. Dude, one incompletion. Put CEH on the practice squad? You can't, based on his current contract. However, you can call you can call a Michael P. Ryan up. He can be a practice squad call-up and might even find himself on the roster later. Yep, Bolton should have had two tutties. Facts. Yep, Tony had a great punt return, which gave him short field. Yeah, there, there's... um. There's definite reasons why Mahomes had under 200 yards. I mean, he's 21 for 27 and three touchdowns. But yeah, he had a, the Bolton scoop and score, took a whole drive away from him, which is fine. Just gave the Eagles the ball right back. Um, but they got, but the Chiefs got a touchdown out of it, so we'll take it. And then, yeah, that punt return set Mahomes up at like the 10. <laughs> um, and then that last drive, McKinnon went down, and I think they kicked a field goal. Mahomes could add four touchdowns. He could add four touchdowns. That's crazy. I like that. Yep, the Sky, uh, Sky Moore had a good return in the AFC Championship game, if that's what you're talking about. Yep. Agreed. On a bum ankle. That's, yep, facts. He wasn't healthy. Bolton had two TDs. He was robbed. Rubber robbed for the second. If you're in the NFL, you better keep your woman on a on a leash what does that even mean I just think uh, you know some of these players come from you know broken homes or um, I mean I came from a broken home myself I have recovering addicts in my family so I didn't always see the healthiest stuff <laughs> growing up <laughs> and how you're supposed to treat people right even people in your own house um, however I think you just got to, you got, I mean, if you're in the NFL, you're making so much money, dude, go to counseling, go to therapy, like work through your stuff, like work through it and develop healthy relationships. It's easier said than done, but a lot of times people, they, they can't afford therapy and counseling, but if you're in the NFL, you can. So try to get healthy, man. Try to get your mind right. And I also understand later in your NFL career, you know, some people are dealing with issues from taking too many hits and, and stuff like that's a whole different combo. Skymore character arc last season was wild. Facts. 100%. Bino with the membership. Let's go, man. Let's ride, baby. Michelle with the $20 super sticker. Appreciate you so much. Thank you for the generous uh, super sticker. It says, you are amazing. No, you are, Michelle. I can only imagine if Mahomes was healthy in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I would... Uh, yeah, when it's grim, I would have loved to see the field not slick, it. you know, as well. Like, we're still hearing excuses about it. I think the Chiefs still could have won that game with uh, with that with a, a field that wasn't slick. Recap what happened. Go to the beginning of the video, Golden, and I talked for 15 minutes. You'll get all that you need. Jonathan said, I know this is random, but if you win the Super Bowl, are you considered world champs? I mean, Mahomes said it. We're world champs. Considering it's the National Football League, I think they call them world champs, but I just say they're Super Bowl champions, personally. Where's Super Bowl 58 at? Uh, Where is it? I don't remember. Where is Super Bowl 58? Allegiant Stadium. Oh. It's at Allegiant Stadium. Hello. Hi. You have beer? Medicine? Like from your house. Oh, okay. Can I say hi? Sure. 
Everybody say hi. hi to Danny. Your camera's so clear. It's weird. I was just watching you in the car. It's weird to be in here now. Hello. Crystal clear. <sighs> beer is medicine, said Matt. <laughs> it kind of is. I do have beer, too. Cheers. Lots of beer, beer for is this medicine. Weekend. We're the worst team in football plays. Facts. Everybody hi, say hi, everybody. Danny. This is Danny summoning me to get off, I think. No, it's we not. Need, we I just go. got home. I'm home so late. I'm not summoning you. I just got here. Do you ever think we'll have a QB2 in Oladokun um, we would bring in to be a run threat like Steve Young and uh, Joe Montana? Uh, maybe. If he develops nicely this year and they move on from Gabbert, who's only on a one-year deal, um, you never know. I. It's hard to know because Andy Reid loves his veteran backups, dude. Matt Moore, uh, Chase Daniel, Chad Henney, and now Blaine Gabbert. But you never know. I'm going to get the laundry. Okay. Everybody say, bye, Danny. Bye. <laughs> she loves you, bro. Yeah, man. We've been married 10 years. She's the, she's the MVP of the house. She runs everything. She's the one that told me to quit my day job to run the channel, and it's really paid off. And, yeah, she's she's the boss, man. Yeah, it's in Vegas. Super Bowl 58. Oh, the face your wife made when she walked into the room. I didn't even see it. Flip said, Danny, are you excited for the staycation? Yeah. So yeah. excited. Yeah, Danny, Danny's the reason I leave the house. If it wasn't... For Danny, I, I would just stay here. So she loves going out. And so happy wife, happy life. It's true. He lets me pick the place, and it's fun. So. I just said, find a place where I'm not recognized. No, I'm just playing. Doesn't happen. It kind of, hotels okay. are a good place in the Kansas City area because there's normally people from out, of, out town. of town. Yeah. yeah, so I'm not really recognized at hotels yeah. um, because people outside of Kansas City area don't really recognize me. We'll see. Where did y'all meet? Bro, we met That's like a long, long time ago, That's man. That's a long story. 11, 12 years thing. ago. We fell in love in Scotland. Well, I fell in love with him. I don't know where you were at, but I fell in love with the man in Scotland. Come to St. Louis? Hey, maybe one day. We want to. It's on our list. We. I've never been to St. Louis. I'm from Cali, so I've never been over there. We did not meet on MySpace, Island Hacker. <laughs> What's MySpace? We need a live Q&A with Danny. We should. We talked about doing it this off season and time flew. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it uh, the bye week. Maybe the bye week would be a good one. Yeah, we just have to schedule it. Yeah. Don't forget the sunscreen when he leaves. Yeah, I have a. I literally went to the store yesterday and bought a bunch of sunscreen. Not even kidding. Yeah, I need so much sunscreen, dude. Yeah. I'm gonna wear a hat, it's the spray glasses, stuff. long sleeve. Just gonna fog him out. Uh, Big B from Arizona. Thanks for not making us sit through all the press conference. I avoid it. Uh, all till I get a notification from you. Hey, man, thanks for the 10, bro. Yeah, I talked about it all at the beginning. I, I summarized it and, and kind of talked about a few other points, too. But that's also what I try to do on my longer-form videos. I take all the all the pressers and try to recap them really short because I'm not going to lie, dude. Should I just say? Should I just be honest? I'll just be honest. Chiefs pressers are ass. Uh, you can't hear the reporters. Um, and... I was like, I don't know if I should say this. Like, I don't want the org to be upset with me, but they got to know it's not good. You know, half the time they're late. Half the time they don't stream it. They go live. Like today, Andy Reid's press conference was two minutes because they didn't go live for the first six, first eight. So, yeah, anytime I can make it better and just recap it for y'all, I just, I don't mind doing it. I wish their press conferences were better, but it just is what it is. Okay, I'm actually going now. All right, that is a finish packing. big water bottle. Do you think it's big enough? Uh, as big as your <laughs> I'm just going to move on. Yeah, thanks again for the 10, bro. Let her get on the mic to announce a game. She doesn't... She don't watch football like that. I mean, she's a Chiefs fan. She's from California, though. It would be funny. I'd be like, he got it. They're going. It would be funny. <laughs> Half of their comments on those videos are complaining about not hearing the reporters. <laughs> yeah, no. And it's... I hope you know when I say their pressers aren't good. It's not, I don't really, like, they're fine. Like, what Andy Reid says is fine. The, for the most part, um, the beat reporters ask fine questions. You just can't hear what's being asked, and it's not dependable. That's all I'm saying. You know, I'm a, I'm a huge Chiefs fan, but I wish the pressers were better because they're pretty bad. 
Let Danny do a short. She can do a voiceover. Oh, <laughs> red and cold. Red and gold till I'm dead and cold set size. Doesn't matter. Hey, man, I just let that. I let that comment go. Just moving on. Twin said, man, I love your video. Please shout me out. Thanks for the kind words, man. Appreciate you. Same thoughts across the kingdom. You're not alone. Yeah, it's bad. I mean, even when I'm listening to the pressers and I download them, I, I go and look at where the reporters are talking and I have to crank that volume up. It's so bad. You kicked, you outkicked your coverage? Oh, I already know, dude. <laughs> I already know, man. Uh, yeah. No, no lies told, man. If you ever watch them, then you know what he's saying. Yeah, it's pretty bad. What should I do visiting KC for the first time this year? Get barbecue. Go to Joe's, maybe. Um, that's one of my favorite places. There's, there's a lot. But definitely get KC barbecue. Try, like, three spots. Two to three spots. Um... Outside of that, go see Arrowhead. I'm sure you're there for a game. Um, and outside of that, there's not that much. Joyce with the membership. Let's go. Yep, we. I love Joe's, man. Lions fan here. What's up, Xander? How do you feel about uh, week one? Um, I feel good, man. Even without Chris Jones, I think the Chiefs can get it done. But um, I have a pretty healthy respect for the Lions. They haven't amounted to much over the past couple of decades. But I do think... With all that being said, I do think um, they are they have a good team. They're on a You guys were on a hot streak last year in the back half of the season. It's a team that the Chiefs cannot sleep on, and I do think you guys uh, definitely have a shot at making the playoffs this year, man. So um, not, to, not a team to take lightly. I have the Chiefs winning 35-31, to 31, but that is a one-score game. That could go either way. Um, no Charles Aminahue and no Chris Jones makes me a little more nervous, um, but I still think the Chiefs could get it done. Patrick Mahomes, 5-0. Week 1 is a starter. Andy Reid, 9-1. And week 1 is the Chiefs head coach. Um, I think they get it done. But uh, much respect to the Lions, man. I have not met Nick Wright, no. Let's go, Ben. Full lifetime Chiefs fan here. Same. Yes, sir. You gotta go to Joe's. Who said that? Never been to Joe's. Every tribe, you gotta go. You have to. Record Danny saying, Touchdown, Kansas City! And use it in the streams. <laughs> They'd be like, who's that? That'd be funny. Kurt, I agree, Cole. How could it not be pointed out to the press corp that they can't be heard? Oh, they know. And here's what's crazy. I toured Arrowhead for the first time this year. Like, actually, like, the locker room. And then, like, the press area. Like, you know where they do their pressers and all the media ask all those questions? Bro, they have, like, six mics hanging from the ceiling. Why don't they freaking use those? It's crazy. Does Charles six game suspension uh, count against the cap? Ooh. Uh, I know he's not like there's some incentives he's not going to earn because of how how many games he's been suspended. But um, does anybody know? I would assume it doesn't count against the cap. But I don't honestly remember off the top of my head. I mean, he's making uh. I think his cap hit this year is like four, we 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 looked it up earlier. It was like four million dollars. Charles Aminahue's cap hit this year is four point four million. So being suspended six games. Does anybody know if uh, that's actually, you know, he's not getting paid for those games? I would assume. So the Chiefs get that cap. Does anybody know? They are saving that microphone money for Chris Jones. Well, fair enough. If they pay Chris Jones, I won't complain this year at all about the mics. What's up, James? You should do a This Week in Sports Ball style series this season like Urinating Tree does. You would not be so biased. I don't even know what that is. I would need to go look at what he's doing. What This Week in Sports Ball, is it like a... Uh, like just covering sports across like every sport throughout the week or what? I do have on the radar to start a Chiefs or an NFL channel as well. Oh, man, Danny, California. Never thought I'd get to quit. Yeah, she got that a lot, dude. When she moved to Kansas City and she said, I'm Danny from California, people would just start singing Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> oh, God. Daryl said, that's a great question. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't... Let's see. What happens to an NFL player's salary when they are suspended? Let's see what happens here. Yes, NFL players do lose money when suspended for games. When a player is suspended, they are not paid for the games that they miss, and they lose the game checks for those games. Game checks are the weekly salaries that NFL players receive during the season. There you go. But the question was, do the Chiefs recoup that? 
I would assume yes. I live in Lee Summit, Chai and Haven. So I live like 17 minutes from Arrowhead. Chiefs have like 16.5 million in cap space at the moment, but they aren't going to use it. Uh, well, because once Chris Jones reports, his cap hit is like 20. So they're going to be negative when he reports. Jack Green, Cole, you represented us well on the Arrowhead podcast. Dude, thanks so much, man. I tried my best. I know there were some trolls in there, you know, flexing their knowledge. I don't know. There's a couple of trolls that follow me wherever I go and just try to mess with me. And here's the thing. I used to engage back and forth with them a lot at the beginning, but I don't know now where I am in my career and yeah, with the channel really that I have time for peasants, especially that have tiny peens. Um, very low self-confidence and are probably under five foot five. I don't have time for those kind of dudes, you know, especially that are borderline homeless and jobless watching me trolling around and making fun of me. You know, I, I kept it professional on the Arrowhead Attic podcast, but, uh, you know, those guys in that chat, they know that I'm their father, like their biological father, and I'm better at them basically than anything in life. But they like to follow me around, come to every channel because I call them out on their BS, and it is what it is, man. How much is Joe's, Jones wanting? I mean, somewhere around uh, Aaron Donald money. Um, the report was that they're close on a deal, Chris Jones and the Chiefs, but the Chiefs have a line in the sand that they are you know, not willing to cross, basically. My name is Kai, but it's spelled... Okay, Kai. Nice. Kai in Haven. Okay. Thanks for the correction. Do you have season tickets? I do not have season tickets. I've always just tried to go to, like, one game a year. But, Jack, thanks so much, man. Honestly, like, aside from the trolls, which I just, you know, I can't focus on that during the interview. Um, it was fun to be on there, and uh, Patrick was great, man. Big fan of their channel, and it was an honor to be on there. Yeah, heck yeah, Sean. Mitch Holtis is a fire, bro. I wish contracts were based on performance. Everyone else gets a base salary, then they get paid per tackle. Ooh, that would be interesting. Loaded hot, really. I live in Brooklyn, New York. This year's Jets game is $600. Aaron Rodgers raised it up that much? My, my. Your shirt is awesome? Thank you, Kai. Yeah, dude, that's the link to that shirt's in the description. I don't make any money by saying that, but a company sent it to me. I was like, heck yeah, we gotta, we gotta throw it out there. You ever met Mahomes? I have not. I have not. I've met uh, Brittany Mahomes, but not Pat. Not Patrick. Thanks, uh, Red and Gold. Appreciate the kind words. Daryl said we got your back, Cole, and we watch games together. Heck yeah, man. No, it's all good. The majority is awesome, and... There's always, um, there's always cellar dwellers, you know, that hang around. I, cellar dwellers, low lives, miserable rodents, whatever, whatever terms you want to coin those losers, um, they're there. It's fine. I literally, you know, I just like I'm living my dream. So I get a, I get a cover the Chiefs for a living. Maybe I'm not doing it to everybody's satisfaction, but I'm trying my best out there, man. Chiefs will save one third of a mini Hughes base salary. Yeah, that's nice. And then Chief Kelsey, he there's a couple incentives he won't hit this year, and they'll save a little bit more. And I'm back. Hurry, let's go. Uh, when I was in like fourth grade, we were going to a field trip to tour Arrowhead like 20 minutes before we left. My friend and I were play fighting. He snitched, said I hit him. I didn't get a go. Oh. That's messed up, dog. <laughs> yeah, I met Brittany. She was Brittany Matthews at the time. They weren't married. But I met her. She was really nice. Okay, Wayne, you're not a rodent. Too bad we can't trade Jones to New York for Williams. I mean... Any, any player out there, especially a high-level player, is better than... No player. Like, if Chris Jones is going to sit out half the season. You know what I mean? Mahomes just had a 20-minute interview with Chris Sims. Ooh, I'm going to have to listen to that. I'm going to listen to that for sure. There's A-roll. There's B-roll. And way D in the list. There's T-rolls. <laughs> there's another Chiefs channel I won't name. But they just ramble. Nah, it's all good. 
Um, yeah, we try our best out here, man. There, there's um, there's some people that like other channels better, and that's totally fine. You know, um, I've I've been able to um, build a pretty a pretty great base of uh, a, in a community, and it's been great, and the algorithm's doing really well. You know, with the videos that I'm making, and I'm very very uh, happy very happy and we work very hard and me and Troy you know I've been I hired him full time in April and we're going to really try to crush it this year I'm looking at bringing somebody else on the team too maybe a part time basis for now but yeah it's been a lot of fun man we're going to kill it your videos are fire thanks um I don't know how to say your first name Levante maybe if so let me know if that's right but yeah man thank you bro we we work really hard I agree with the title. Honestly, Chris Jones not being a team player and acting like he's Aaron Donald and he's not. Stop being greedy and get back to work. I think I still think like even I might have Chris Jones as the best DT in the NFL, even over over Aaron Donald. And it's just because I think Aaron Donald's pass is prime and Chris Jones is right there. However, I do think Aaron Donald is overpaid. <laughs> he's the highest non he's the highest paid non QB in the NFL, and I, I think that's a little high. Um, so if Chris Jones is wanting that money when Aaron Donald's contract, I think, is an outlier. Um, yeah, I just I just think he's overpaid, and it's more of an outlier deal for now, until the cap, you know, like, eventually that won't be an outlier deal. Is is a bit ahead of his time. That's how you pronounce it? Levante, let's go. I got it right. Just at OBS StreamYard, a few others. We will see what happens. I don't even know what that means. Download? Oh, downloaded. Nice, dude. I use Ecamm Live Pro, personally. They are free to have their opinion, even though they're wrong. Oh, that's all good, Zach. Appreciate the kind words, brother. You like Justin Jefferson? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's awesome. This is just my type of channel. I drafted Cole number one. Jack, let's go, dude. Let's go, man. I appreciate it. You know, I... I never knew the channel was going to take off, and when it did, I just like, okay, how can I make it better? Um, how can I provide more value? And I, I focus less on, like, people ask me, even these days, they're, like, asking me, like, questions about stuff on the YouTube channel, like, what's your click-through rate? What's your watch retention? What's your average view duration? I'm like, dude, I don't know. I literally drop a video and then turn around and start working on more content for you guys. Like, I don't worry about that stuff. Just make the content as good as you can and just run to the next. Uh, do you think Deuce Vaughn will be? How do you think he? What do you think he'll be? You think uh, we should have gotten him? Um, I mean, I'm excited to see how he does with the Cowboys. And what five 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 five? He's looking little, the little guy out there. But I'm excited. I don't know that. Um, yeah, I use Ecamm Live, Pyramid Seven. Um, but uh, I don't know if the Chiefs should have got him per se. But I. I'm happy for him that he got a chance and his his dad was the one to call and tell him that he was drafted by the team because his dad's a coach for the Cowboys, so that was pretty cool. I say we give Cole the $30 million and make him the MVP. <sighs> $30 million? I wouldn't even know what to do. I think I'd buy every house on this block and move move you guys into it. <laughs> Have a huge tailgate. every every Like block parties every Sunday. Bosa's worth being the highest paid non-QB is 25 Already has Defensive Player of the Year and two All-Pros. Yeah, I think uh, Bosa probably needs all that he's asking for, especially based on his age. I agree. Born on a Sunday at 736. What is happening here? Dad and Doc walk in the room and tell Mom, Chiefs won. Let's have this baby. Hey, that's fire, Stranger Jake. Fonzie said it's a tough spot. Uh, numbers will go be going up over time, so whatever Jones is asking for now, yeah, in three years. But the problem is the Chiefs probably don't want his deal to be much longer than that. They probably want an out a little bit sooner than he does, a little bit less guarantees than he does. I think age is playing a factor. And that's the hardest. Uh, that might be the biggest hurdle. Start the buy the block fund. We move it in, crew. Dude, imagine we change this name, the name of my neighborhood to HBTC headquarters or something, and it's just just the fans. The fan, the Chiefs Kingdom fan base is hanging out. <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. Butker is rated 27th in the league. Uh, over the past five to seven years, he's top two or three. You can't just go um, off of last year when he had a high ankle sprain. You know what I mean? You've got to factor in the years he was healthy. And he also said 
Uh, he also said that he feels better right now this year than he did last year. We got a package. Speaking of a package, before I get off here, we have something to open from Greg. We also got a Chiefs flag. I ordered five of them because I'm going to give some away, or at least one away. But you guys see the Chiefs flags that were available for pre-order? I haven't even looked at them yet, so we got to look at them together. Oh, that's fire. That's fire! Look at that. I had to buy it when it said Super Bowl 57 champions. Woo! Doge! Woo! Bro, imagine I just stream like this. Yo, what's up, guys? Oh, I'm just playing. That looks nice. I need to hang that bad boy up. I don't know where. It's going right here for now. All right, we got one package to open, then I got to get off. We'll give one away on a live stream soon, probably, is what I'll do. I ordered five, and I think I've given away three. So I have two left. One's mine. So maybe one. Or I'll give away this one, too. I don't know. I don't mind giving it away. It's fine. Let's see what this is. Hmm. What is this? It feels like a jersey. I think it's from Greg. Imagine that. Greg with the blessing, huh? What do we got going on here, though? Two jerseys. Oh, nice. Is this it? Nice. Hey, we got a tight end package, basically. That sounded weird. But, uh... We got a signed Blake Bell and signed Noah Gray. We got two tight ends on the roster. Bell and Gray, baby. Let's go. I like that. I don't have either of these jerseys either. Let's go, dude. Two hours already? Yeah, I know. I've been live for... Yeah, about two hours. You missed the pre-order? Flags are at McDonald's this Wednesday? I have no idea, to be honest. I pre-ordered them from the Chiefs website or whatever. Hey, guys. Also, I ordered that stupid WWE Chiefs belt. <laughs> We're going to put it here. Look. We're going to hang it here. We're going to hang it here. And when the Chiefs get a dub, that belt's coming off. I'm going I'm to just hold it up like this on the shoulder. Denise with the 10. Woo, dog. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you, Cole, for all you do. And mods. Got to shout out the mods. Yeah, you already know, dude. We got the Chiefs belt. I had to order it. I don't know. It's so stupid. Like, the price was stupid. But I was like, it's going to be a hilarious uh, prop to use on live streams. I'll, if you don't know what the belt is, I'm going to show you if I can find it. Where is it? Can I find it quickly? Come, come on. I'll just, I'm going to Google it. It's faster. Chiefs WWE belt. It looks like this. It looks like this. It's just a, a kind of a bright belt, dude. However, we're gonna rock it. We're gonna we're gonna wear this bad boy. We're gonna put it right here. We're gonna put it up here. We're gonna fold it and put it up there. <laughs> Thanks again for the ten, Denise. Where do you get signed jerseys from the Chiefs bids app? Go to the download the Chiefs app and they have like a bids a bids section. It's from that. That's what it's from. For 550, better wear it every day. Dude, I'm gonna sleep in that thing. Not gonna lie. It's it was too much money. But I was like, you know what? I never buy stuff like that. Like I just don't. I'm pretty frugal. So but I was like, you know what, I'm gonna buy it and we're gonna use it as a prop. This this uh yeah, it is a, it's literally a business expense, Nick. So that's why I was like, I'm just gonna buy it. 
Part of the brand now. Yes, sir. For 500, you better. Dude, for 500 bucks, I'm just going to wear it around in public. Just <laughs> right around the waist. Just walk around with it. Man, man. <clears throat> yep, exactly, Smiley. It's dope. I will say, it said my order was canceled, though. I don't know why. I need to go figure out why, why that would be. Bear Mattress and Champs Belt. Exactly. We got Bear Mattress, sponsor. Underdog Fantasy, sponsor. Some others that we're trying to work into the rotation that I'm super excited about. Sponsor. Speaking of Underdog, well, I brought it up. If you guys want to play in a private draft, I got two links in there. $10 private draft and a $25 dollar private draft in the description they're almost full they're over halfway full both of them this is like the second or third round of drafts that we've filled up and if you want to play with me the mods editor troy so, uh, some of the community it's there you could use code hbtc to double your first deposit up to a hundred dollars and run it up baby um some people are saying hey in missouri you can't play so i've had that comment a couple times i do want to clarify you can play in missouri you, you can do the drafts if you, you can't do the weekly pickums though. You have to go to Kansas. Um, but if you live in Missouri, you can do the drafts. I, I live in Missouri, and I do them all right here. They use your location, and it's all legit. I suck at fantasy drafting. Well, uh, Underdog makes it pretty easy, which is what I have what I like. Costco with your belt on? Dude, everywhere. Can you hit the gritty? No, I can't. I can't dance. <clears throat> That's chat sports? Who is? What's chat sports? <clears throat> Those thumbnails gonna be insane. <laughs> dude, this is gonna be fun with that belt, dude. What's up, JLF? Good to see you. Hurry, <laughs> you're funny, dude. Yeah, what's up, Magic Man? I'm about to get off, but I hope you're doing well, man. Do wish you could uh, set up your own rankings to pull in all your drafts. That would be awesome. What if we don't know how the fantasy draft? I don't know how to turn on my phone. That's about all. What if we? What if we don't know how the fantasy draft? Yeah, you just have to download the app, or you can use their website. You don't have to use it on your phone. Underdog, hire me to add features to your app. <laughs> hire Nick. Joyce, can you ask what? Ask what? Don't get eagle tears on the belt. Won't do it. For your autograph, I will give you my autograph if you want it. I, it's not worth anything, but if you want it, I'll give it. You know, at the Tom Grassi meetup, there's some people asking for an autograph, and I was like, if you really want it, I don't, you know, I feel weird about it, but I'll, I'll give it. Enjoy the staycation. Heck yeah, Stranger Dick. I'm out of here too, man. Yeah, Wesley, what up, dude? Yeah, we're going, me and Danny are going right now, so I'm going to get off. And uh, again, if Chris Jones gets signed or returns, I'll do a video this weekend. If not, you probably won't hear from me again in like a long form video until Sunday night, and that might also be a live stream with updates. Um, and then Monday, we'll be back at it. Uh, with the start of the season. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about go? Cheers.